We we're going to go ahead and call our um, regular town board meeting to order. Um, at this time, uh, I'm going to call on Commissioner Smith for the invocation and Commissioner Wunsch for our pledge. All stand. <coughs> Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to give us to be here tonight. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to live in this community. Lord, I pray that you'll be with uh, us tonight as we look at our agenda and make uh, the decisions that are best for our community. Lord, I pray for your wisdom as we do that. Father, as we all know, tomorrow will be a transition in our national government as we transition to a new administration. Father, I pray that uh, the next four years will be prosperous for our country. I pray for everything to go smoothly tomorrow. I pray that uh, you will continue to bless our country, continue to bless our state, continue to bless our community. Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can turn to the flag, flag and recite the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. virtual meeting protocol. At this time, I will ask our town manager, Adam uh, Mitchell, uh, to review the meeting protocol for public participation as it relates to this virtual meeting. Adam. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. Good evening, board members. All attendees that have joined the meeting tonight have joined muted. Uh, there is a public comment period near the beginning of the meeting, and there are no scheduled public hearings for this evening. Therefore, the time to address the town board tonight is during the public comment section of the meeting. If the public wishes to address the town board during the public comment period, they will need to notify the town host that they wish to speak. For anyone on the, uh, from the public who's uh, joined us tonight, for your benefit, if you're joining the meeting online and wish to speak, please press the raise hand button in the Zoom application. If you're joining the meeting via telephone, please press star nine to raise your hand. After you have raised your hand, you will enter into a queue. When the public comment period begins, Mayor Byrne will ask the town host to recognize you to speak by calling out your name or the last four digits of your telephone number. You will be unmuted at this time and allowed to address the town board. We ask you to begin your comments by stating your name and address for the public record. The public is asked to keep all comments to three minutes so that all that wish to speak can be heard in a timely manner. Once you have finished addressing the town board, you will be muted for the remainder of the meeting. And this concludes the protocol for tonight's meeting, Mayor. Thank you, Adam. <clears throat> Approval of the minutes for the January 4th, 2021 regular scheduled town board meeting. Mayor, make a motion to approve the minutes. 2021, sort of the first time saying that number, you know, but we've, moved into, a, day. we've moved into a new year. <laughs> we've got a motion yes, over here. Yes, sir, here. Mayor, I make a motion to approve them as recommended. Okay. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, there are no presentations tonight. Okay, so we'll move on. At this time, the IT director will call on individuals that have virtually raised their hand by way of the Zoom app or by telephone. Those wishing to address the town board will become unmuted one at a time. As, the remain, as a reminder, public comment is for those wishing to speak on matters that are not subject to a public hearing. Those speaking are asked uh, to begin by stating your name and address for the public record. Please limit your comments to three minutes in order that all who wish to speak may be heard in a timely manner. Scott, do we have anybody that has raised their hand? Uh, no, sir. I see no hands raised. Okie dokie. We'll move right on. We move to the next item on the agenda, 6A. Um, there are no items from previous meetings that were tabled, so we move by that one. We move to 7A. Um, no public hearing schedule. We're now to 8A. 
What is the board's pleasure on the items on the consent agenda? Mayor, I make a motion to approve consent agenda items, both A and B. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Well, we're going to look forward to a good manager's report here. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Mayor. A um, <clears throat> couple of things that I wanted to just uh, bring to the board's attention this evening. And, and first, let me just say that the, uh, this is a bit of an unusual town board meeting that we have uh, such a brief meeting this, uh, this evening. Um, we had no planning board uh, meeting in the month of December. And uh, that was just a timing issue with the way that applications for, for uh, zoning or land use plan amendments uh, fell through the cycle. Um, this month's planning board meeting, uh, due to the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, fell before, uh, a week before. And so because of the scheduling, uh, uh, unusual uh, scheduling that happens in January, uh, it typically aligns for uh, a more brief second meeting in January. Don't get used to this. You'll pay for it in February, uh, I'm, I'm most certain. Um, but I did just want to you know, bring that to the boards and the public's attention of, as to why uh, this meeting usually uh, falls a little shorter on agenda items. Um, I also just want to draw out that on the consent agenda, one of the items that was approved by the board tonight was the schedule for the fiscal year 22 budget process. And uh, for anyone from the public that may be listening to this meeting or watching uh, via live stream or that watches after uh, via our YouTube channel, uh, and we will be promoting this on our town website as well as on our social media, we will have a uh, pre-budget development public hearing, as is customary, um, on February 16th of this year. And that will be from any, uh, uh, so that anyone from the public that wishes to address the board and um, and either provide input or request your consideration during the budget process for a specific initiative or project, uh, that would be the time for them to uh, provide that input ahead of the budget development process so that you would have plenty of time to consider that request so that staff would have plenty of time to prepare information for you that would help inform uh, that decision-making process. So that'll be on February 16th, uh, and we will again, we'll. Uh, advertise that public hearing as required by any public hearing that we do. This is not a required public hearing. This is a policy public hearing that the town board for years has decided that you uh, uh, wish to do in order to provide the public plenty of opportunity during the front end. And of course, we have to have public hearings as required by statute on the back end before budget adoption, which typically happens in June. And that's a regular town board meeting. That will be a regular town board meeting, second meeting in February. Yep. So again, we'll, we'll advertise that as we normally do, as well as through our website and social media uh, outlets to try to and encourage the public if they have any input. Yeah, and that's just st starting the process. That's right. We're starting the process. Uh, we'll have budget workshops. We'll have, of course, our required public hearings. Um, and there will be uh, a public presentation of the budget when it's recommended to the town board sure. in May. So I wanted just to draw that out publicly since it was a consent agenda item so that uh, the public would be aware of that. Uh, two um, great announcements uh, out of our police department that I'm proud to uh, bring to your attention this evening. First, the town received um, a compliance memorandum from the U.S. Department of Justice uh, indicating that we have satisfactorily complied with the requirement of Presidential Executive Order 13929, the Safe Policing for Safe Communities Executive Order, and we have demonstrated the ability to enforce those tasks required of a law enforcement agency. Uh, specifically, that executive order, which was issued on June 16th of 2020, mandates law enforcement agencies to adhere to the executive order by their use of force policies, adhering to all applicable federal, state, and local laws, and an agency's use of force policies prohibit the use of chokeholds, 
a physical maneuver that restricts an individual's ability to breathe for the purpose of incapacitation, except in those situations where the use of deadly force is allowed by law. Uh, we submitted our policies uh, for the Department of Justice to review, and again, uh, we have received a compliance memorandum on that. So uh, that's something that uh, uh, we always felt like we were in compliance, uh, but to have that reassurance issued to us by the U.S. Department of Justice uh, just uh, reaffirms what we know, is, uh, which is we have policies. And kind of getting that, all of it updated. That's right. Um, is the police chief on the line? She we, should be on the line, yes, We want to congratulate her if she's <clears throat> there and she might speak to us for a second. Laura? Yes, I'm here, Mayor. I'm here. Could you give us anything? Yes, that we're very... Yes, um, with this, uh, with the U.S. DOJ, as well as the North Carolina Law Enforcement Accreditation <clears throat> Program, um, this basically is saying our use of force policy is in compliance with federal and state requirements. And it will also impact all of our grant requests that we submit to the state or the feds so that we're in compliance and we'll be eligible to request such grants. So that it impacts not just law enforcement, it impacts all facets of town operations when we apply for funding. So this is something that, that you know, we didn't have to update. We had already had our policy in compliance prior to the request. But when the uh, North Carolina uh, NCPEA had requested <clears throat> the forms and the documents and the policies to be submitted so that they could submit them to the USDOJ, we were already prepared for the request, submitted them on time. And we are so far one of 150 law enforcement agencies in the state of North Carolina that have received the uh, letter this week. Well, congratulations to you, and thank you for um, all of your efforts and your and your team's efforts um, for this um, important certification for our community. Thank you, sir. Yes. And Chief, uh, hang in there because uh, the mayor may call on you again for the next announcement. Uh, so uh, periodically there are a number of uh, rankings that come out uh, annually for uh, different communities. I believe Commissioner Wunsch spoke to one maybe a board meeting or two board meetings ago uh, that Fuqua Verena found itself in. Um, Moneygeek.com. <laughs> they are a... Uh, uh, a website that uh, most recently uh, ranked the safest cities uh, in the United States and by state. And Fuquay Verena uh, has been ranked the number one safest city in North Carolina by MoneyGeek.com and the 76th safest city in the United States for cities with a population of 30,000 to 100,000. Um, their rankings were based on crime rates. Uh, and a total per offense societal cost of crime was calculated for each crime category. The cost of crimes are calculated by reviewing victim cost, criminal justice system cost, crime cost, and community cost. And the town reports crime statistics annually to the State Bureau of Investigation and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, which is where they pull their statistics from. So based on the uh, statistics that we provide to the SBI and the FBI and the uh, uh, formula that they used to develop their rankings, Fuquay Verena ranked number, the number one safest city and town in North Carolina, population 30,000 to 100,000, and number 76 in the country. Wow. That's good. That's a big deal. And, um, um, Chief, you want to um, you want to comment uh, on that? I know you have been uh, working very hard, and your effort on um, – <coughs> You know, the social media side um, really has allowed our community to become engaged, you know, in helping the police department. And I, I appreciate that so, so very much. Um, I hear a lot of good feedback in the community. But, Chief, please comment. Yes, sir. This is not just the police department. It is community-oriented policing, which is a partnership between the police department and the community to improve the quality of life and reduce crime. And our relationships with the business community, with our residents, with our guests within our community, working together to address all crimes. And it's mainly 
part one crimes that we look at, which is murder, rape, robbery, aggravated assault, assault larceny, arsons, those kinds of crimes, those, those higher level crimes that can impact the quality of life of our citizens. And when we do share educational information, whether it's through social media, whether it's through our community watch programs, day-to-day uh, -day operations, when our community works with us to lock car doors, uh, remove obvious valuables within cars, the business community is applying those crime prevention techniques. Uh, it all helps us to reduce crime within our community because a police officer can't be on every street corner every minute of the day. And so we rely upon our community to be our eyes and ears to help us resolve these crime issues and prevent crime. That's ultimately what we want to do is prevent crime. And it, it works and it's uh, we're very proud of this number one rating, but we don't need to just stop here. We want to continue to do the good work and work together with our community to make sure that we're a safe community for everyone. And we thank everyone for working with us and we appreciate the support from town management or other town departments and of course our board for providing us with the resources that we need to be able to do our job effectively. You know, one other area that I think that you have done an extremely good job in is working with town staff. In other words, we have, uh, Adam, how many employees we got now? 280 some? Three. 300. 283. 283, okay. Um, uh, but all of these members of our staff work closely with each other's departments and uh, bring information to the police department. And, and I appreciate uh, all staff members or directors and their teams uh, for helping our police department. You don't become number one, um, you know, by, by accident. Um, but thank you very much, uh, Chief. Um, Commissioner Smith, you're a former police chief here. Would you like to make a comment or two? We, it's a big deal. It is a big deal, and uh, I'm very proud of our police department, the leadership there. Um, very proud that our, our board and our town management has seen uh, the need to give them the resources, as Chief Onstock said, to help the officers uh, get out and get the things done we need to get done. But it's, it's a pretty big deal for us to uh, all at one time to be recognized for being proactive on having good use of force policies and also to be uh, recognized that we're keeping the crime rate down. So kudos to our officers, kudos to our police leadership, and congratulations, Chief Onstock. It's just a job well done all the way around by our department. Commissioner Harris, would you like to add anything? I know you've worked on um, uh, oh, I was, I was, this area. Oh, yeah. When I, when I heard this, I was thinking about um, uh, Commissioner and former Chief Smith. When we started working and it brought about and came to mind how important it is to continue the partnership with the community. And I, I see that our current chief has made a, a exerted effort to continue to have those ongoing partnerships which I think is really contributes overall to the health of the community and her efforts are to be commended as, as well as the other officers who I see visibly out in the community and I think that means a lot to continue to dispel this um, image a negative image sometimes that law enforcement has in the community so I'm I'm excited about what I've heard and it just helps me to realize that we're doing some great things to continue to impact uh, the community and to continue to connect with the community, which I think is so important. Thank you. And I, I mean, we've got a short meeting tonight. Uh, let's go to Commissioner Wunsch. I'd like to get all of our, this is a big deal. Uh, both of the, I mean, these are um, uh, important things to the community at large. And Commissioner Wunsch is, um, you know, I mean, it's not in law enforcement, but uh, he's an attorney and he recognizes this. Yeah, and, and I um, just wanted to say that I was just really excited to see uh, that ranking, but not surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, because we, we have um, uh, an awesome, wonderful uh, police department with an awesome, wonderful uh, leadership in chief. And, um, and, and then prior to that <laughs> with, um, uh, Commissioner Smith and so uh, we we and there's been a lot of work that's been done like the mayor was saying and Commissioner Harris was saying there's been a lot of work that's been done to get 
to that point. It just doesn't happen. Uh, a lot of, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of, like the chief talks about working with the community and partnering with the community. And we've seen the evidence of that. And, and it's, it's just, it, I would just say finally, it's just so great to see how beloved the department is and the chief is. Um, when one of the most popular people in your community is your police chief, that says a lot about the department. I mean, that just really does because um, uh, when law enforcement is, is looked at so favorably um, uh, as I believe it should, uh, but as favorably it is, as it is in our community, that just shows a, a department that is working uh, with its community to make good things happen in its community. And, and uh, it was, um, I was just not surprised and to see number 76 in the country. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner uh, Gardner, you have any thoughts uh, while we're moving around the room? Well, I just think this is really exciting news, and I add my congratulations to Chief Fonstock and the entire department um, and our community as well for this, these uh, recognitions. Uh, they're, they're such different recognitions. That's really, I think, interesting and thrilling here. It's kind of like we're getting it done and we're doing it right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gordon. Mayor Pro Tem, I know you've been a big supporter of law enforcement and, and um, you know, encouraged us in this area. Yes, sir. I think <clears throat> I think this goes to show that our investments paid off and how great the, the police department has done in our community, how much our community appreciates and supports our police department through the different programs they've done. Um, if every department that we work with is in decision this town makes is an investment. And this investment has been has been great and I think this goes to prove why when budget time comes up no different than what we did last year we need to continue to increase funding and help support the police department where we see other police departments in our country that are trying to reduce or do backwards type things that i don't think are proactive i think uh, the police department needs to be rewarded and allow them to continue doing the things that they're doing and keep encouraging them to keep doing what they're doing you know i think you make a real good point it's it's not so much about um you know the the brutality that that it, it's about representing our town in our community and having our community accept our police department um, and allowing our police department and all of the employees to be all they can be um, you know we've we've um, we've got a good police department we're, we're blessed in a lot of different ways, um, you know, we've seen a lot of uh, police brutality, you know, over this past year. But um, I think in Fuqua Verena, we're blessed in so many uh, different ways, as Commissioner Harris has said, and Commissioner Smith was talking about earlier. And I just appreciate. Uh, what our what our chief does, but it's our whole team. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just the uh, it's not just the chief. It's the her team of, of folks. Um, but anyway, uh, chief, uh, I reckon you're tired of us bragging on you, but um, we're proud of you. You can tell. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm, I always like to hear good things, but uh, <laughs> it's it's not just. Me. <laughs> It's not just me. It's not just every member of the department. It's our entire community and town staff working together to improve the quality of life for everyone within our wonderful town of Fuqua Verena. Yeah. And I'm so pleased that we've had the partnerships we have, but we, we can't stop with having this right now. We have to continue to work. And I still tell everybody, remove your valuables and lock your car doors because <laughs> we still have people that leave pocketbooks and guns in unsecured vehicles in town and that's something that will have a direct impact on our crime rate if people would just take a few seconds mm -hmm. to remove those valuables and lock those car doors and it's almost nine o'clock chief and there's a special program that goes on at nine o'clock too shortly that's right it's <laughs> hashtag 9 p.m routine but you know mm -hmm. it should be every second of every day mm -hmm. no matter where you park uh, you have to be vigilant because people will take advantage uh, if we put our guard down even for a second, uh, somebody could reach inside and grab a pocketbook or even a firearm. And we've got to be responsible and uh, 
start protecting ourselves and, and putting in place something as simple as 9 p.m. routine, removing the pocketbook and locking the car door, it really can impact our crime rate. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Adam, we'll go back to you. Thank you, Mayor. And I can assure you that uh, as you were speaking, Chief Fonstock was tearing up her budget request that she had been working <laughs> on, starting anew. Yeah, no one, yeah. I hope you heard me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Our fire department continues to do some great work as well. Uh, Chief Malden and his leadership team are finalizing their uh, budget proposal to uh, Wake County um, that they intend to submit uh, within the next week or so. And additionally, we will be bringing at the next town board meeting a recommendation for a uh, design build team for fire station number four for your consideration. Wonderful. So, uh, making some advancements uh, in the fire department as well. Our finance department has uh, begun the preparation steps for the uh, budget uh, kickoff process, including uh, we'll be getting information out to department heads so they can begin, if they haven't already, in earnest working on their budget requests. And, uh, it won't be long before we'll be scheduling with you some budget workshops. We'll spend more time uh, talking about uh, next year and years into the future at our strategic planning retreat. The Parks, Recreation, Cultural Resources Department, um, our greenway, our new greenway from Old Honeycutt Road Park to uh, South Lakes will be opened to the public next week. And uh, we are going to be having a Facebook Live ribbon cutting uh, that is being planned right now for next Tuesday. And so uh, if you haven't received some information on that yet, you should be uh, receiving that information very shortly. And uh, uh, we won't be having a uh, sort of a large public gathering ribbon cutting, but we are going to try to do something similar to what we did on uh, Facebook Live with our unveiling of our fire truck, uh, a ribbon cutting type uh, live ceremony, uh, letting the public know that this uh, greenway for which uh, was paid for all through other resources than that of the uh, the citizens of the town. We were able to pay for that with grant funding. Uh, uh, it's finally complete and ready for public use. Well, and it was, yes, other than the town, I mean, the um, the Greenway was donated uh, to that comes into... Pro the property was dedicated to the town, that's, that's right. That's right, and, uh, which was a big deal. It was. It was a big part of the cost of the, of the development of the total project, and, of course, Timing is everything, and due to some rescinded funds, Campo had some additional funds free up, and we're able to uh, shift them to our direction because we had this project designed, ready to go, sitting on a shelf, and uh, the timing just worked out in our benefit. And that's another uh, Tracy that's uh, right. uh, project that um, he really paid attention to and, and had it done, had it on the shelf, and... Um, we were able to fall right in there at Campo and, um, um, you know, it's another win for, for our citizens. Absolutely. Uh, and we are under contract with H&H &H Architecture for phase one of the <coughs> design services for the community center, a uh, senior center project. And uh, that's just a recent development. The town board uh, authorized the contract subject to uh, town attorney review is to form. We finalized all of that since the last town board meeting, and we are under contract. And so uh, we will begin working with H&H &H, uh, Architecture to start the, the public engagement process around those, project, uh, around those two facilities. Uh, the Art Center staff is planning a new series of virtual showcases for the spring. We're, we're trying to balance, obviously, safety, number one, but also having some activity and productivity out of that space under uh, current conditions with COVID. And as we have more plans in place, we'll begin sharing those with the, uh, with the town board and the public. Um, as far as our public works department goes, we did prepare for a possible winter storm back on January 8th, which uh, fortunately turned out to be a non-event, but it was a good exercise uh, for us to be ready for any winter weather that may come over the next couple of months. Uh, we've been fortunate to not have very bad winter weather uh, in recent uh, time here, but our, our team is prepared in the event that that does happen so that we can uh, tackle the roads, tackle the sidewalks, the public spaces to make them safe for the public after an event occurs. Continuing to advance projects through our IT department, uh, the Vance Street uh, mural is complete. If you haven't had a chance to see that in person, I encourage you to, to uh, make your way down to Vance Street and South Main Street to look at that mural. It's uh, 
uh, artistically and aesthetically a, a nice improvement for our downtown, especially in that location. Adam, it's, it's also the improvement that we envisioned when we did the original streetscape work. Yes, sir. Uh, there. And um, I really like the way the, the landlord there has fixed the signs, mm -hmm. you know, of the businesses. You know, it all kind of um, blends in. It, it, it looks beautiful. Yeah. Uh, certainly uh, giving some love to the, the physical building itself with new paint, uh, redoing the signage. The town participated by doing some landscaping uh, improvement so that it opens that area up and, and brings more attention to the building. And they needed to be done. It did. Certainly yeah. the mural yeah. uh, is, is beautiful. And then uh, there is another component that remains to be done that there, uh, that has been ordered just waiting on uh, manufacturing to, uh, to finish the work, which is the awnings uh, for those uh, individual business spaces. And uh, those are uh, scheduled to be installed uh, in the next month or two and so we'll kind of be keeping a close eye on that the FEDA uh, staff Dawn and Rachel did a great job working with the um, and I should say FEDA certainly uh, Rachel FD, FVDA's board but Dawn being a town employee as well you know they all stayed engaged they all worked with the property owner uh, to yield a good outcome for, for that area you know one thing I would say about it is that it you know, we see it now, but Marilyn, you might want to comment. It's been a process. This didn't just happen. Oh, no. It was worked on, been working on for six, eight months, uh, if not, maybe even longer. But Marilyn, you might want to comment on that. Yes, and, and if, um, Adam, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but uh, we got some assistance from the North Carolina Main Street program um, in some free... Um, design work and help design. from uh, UNCG. That's correct. Um, and, you know, to have those resources available is, is just another benefit of being a Main Street community and having access to um, some of those perks like that. So it's really uh, like just what we've been talking about earlier tonight. It's, it's, um, it's everyone cooperating uh, for the end result that we want. And um, it it really gives the community ownership, I think, and, and it's so beautiful. Well, I think Rachel and, and Dawn both um, have done an outstanding job with this. Absol um, absolutely. You know, bringing it together. And, um, you know, to see them at a Main Street conference, um, they're scouring around trying to figure out what other communities have done and how we can do better in Fuquay Verena. And this is an, a, one of the examples of, um, like Marilyn's saying, how important the Main Street program has been to Fuquay Verena over the years. And it's, it's not just this project, it has been many separate little projects all around our community. Yeah. And I would just piggyback on what both of you were saying, Mayor and, and Commissioner Gardner. Um, you know, I think initially the, the property owner was a bit reluctant to want to commit. And I, I think the tipping point was when the Main Street st staff and their technical support came into play to really paint a picture and create a vision on paper for what it could look like, what it could be, sure. versus just talk. And I think that was a, a needle mover for getting the property owner to commit. And then certainly you as a board need to be committed as well because we did participate in this with a facade grant as well. And so, uh, you know, there's some participation from the town side as well that really collectively between the FEDA staff working it, uh, this board committing to it through a facade grant, the property owner being willing to say, okay, the, it, there's, now has come the time for me to work with the town and, and dress my, my property up and the businesses that are that are tenants in there they're benefiting from this as well it's yeah. a it's a collective win 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 you get rid of all them them trees there that were that really weren't serving much of a purpose yeah. and it, if you remember we had the 45 degree angle awning there that yeah. was not the prettiest of sights no. either that, that that was a nice yeah. removal from the and, uh, and you know i think adam is right situation. we need to complement the property owner because without the property owners um uh, 
um, wanting to do this, you know, we're kind of dead in the water. That's right. And we are going to try to have them join us for a Zoom meeting at some point in time in the not so distant, maybe when the awnings are complete and it's 100% done, just so that uh, uh, we can give them some public recognition. Yeah. At a, Absolutely. At a we well, the location of this project, too, is like the the gateway of that, the foot of our um, Fuquay district mm -hmm. in downtown. So I think it just um, says to anyone coming in from the south on that Main Street corridor, it just shows them a, a, a community I think anybody would want to be part of with all of the activities that are pictured. No, I think you're right. We, we want to write him a nice letter. We will. We'll, we'll take care of well that. Well. Adam. Okay. Um, Additionally, I just want to report that we have issued, uh, uh, it looks like 2021 is, is starting off uh, as hot as 2020 ended with uh, uh, development. We have issued 88 new single family permits so far this month. And just as a gauge, the average for the month of January for the last six years has been 54. Right. And so 88 certainly is uh, exceeding that average over the, that last period. Can I interrupt you? How, how many did we issue for? 2020? 1,020-ish. Okay. Don't, it's the first time we've ever been over 1,000. Yeah, and don't quote me exactly on the number, but it was a, it was not 1,050, but 1,031 is what I'm being told right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Somebody was ready for that question. That's right, 1,031. Um, additionally, we uh, are working uh, with the mayor to uh, prepare Susan and, and Scott, myself, Mark, Jim, Seymour, all working to uh, help uh, with the mayor's preparation of the State of the Town Address. That'll be the first meeting in March, which I believe is March 1st, if I'm not mistaken. mistaken. And so uh, we've got some, some neat ideas and, and vision plan for that as well uh, for the mayor to, to be And we'll start that one a little early. We will. We'll start it usually by 6.30. That's right. And it'll be a little different than the fact that we likely won't, you know, have the public in this space with us, but we will broadcast it uh, live as the mayor is, is providing that, that information. And then finally, I just want to, again, remind you that uh, we do have our uh, town board strategic planning retreat, January 29th and uh, 30th. Um, and uh, staff is working hard to, uh, to prepare for that. Um, I have heard from some board members uh, about some some topics that you would like for uh, us to be prepared to speak to at retreat. If any of you have any other thoughts or ideas, uh, certainly if you could uh, provide those, um, maybe perhaps by the end of this week or for, certainly by the first of next week, that would be helpful to give us enough time to prepare any information that we would need to. Um, I think it's going to be a very uh, exciting retreat. I know that uh, the management is, is getting excited about it. Uh, uh, a number of great topics. We are going to sort of uh, create uh, the theme of our strategic plan around this retreat. So everything is going to tie back to that strategic plan in one way or another. Uh, but we're going to have some, you know, some interesting topics to discuss. Bond referendum potentially being one of those. Um, uh, federal appropriations priorities uh, being one of those. Economic development. We certainly have got a number of of topics under economic development, planning, public utilities, engineering. We've got a lot of topics that are going to, parks and recreation, they're going to fall under each of those categories that will certainly keep us busy uh, over the course of those, uh, those two days. More information and details about the retreat will be coming out to you uh, shortly, probably by the beginning of next week. Um, uh, just with the specifics that you would normally receive on an annual basis. But again, if you have uh, ideas or topics that you would like for us to speak to, in addition to what we are already planning to, uh, to address with you, we'll try to fit them in as best we can and uh, get it all done. We're going to have a busy, a, a busy two days, but uh, we're going to work real hard to touch on all the topics. You know, and, and this is your retreat, so you know, make sure if you have something that um, you're thinking about, um, you know, you, you let Adam know. Um, um, you know, you're trying to look at Fuquay Verena, not, I mean, not necessarily for the d today and tomorrow, but for five and ten years from now. Um, what we're going to be like um, right. in 50 years from now. I mean, you know, we're trying to prepare um for that so uh, think about it uh, in a, a lot in those sort of 
ways. Um, Transportation, planning, uh, economic development, uh, quality of life, those are going to all be yeah. topics and areas that we're going to really be uh, uh, looking out forecasting on at this you know I, I can remember when we were public safety when we were talking about um, you know water and sewer and we've just got completed our sewer treatment plant and now we're really in the throes of um, moving forward with water that's right uh, on this are you gonna have some more information we about will. that yes sir retreat we, we will indeed. I think that's a big uh, big deal for the next 30 40 years yes sir uh, in addition, uh, there w was a quarterly report provided to you in your agenda materials for the second quarter of uh, this fiscal year, budget year that we're in. Uh, so please, uh, if you haven't already had an opportunity, take a look at those metrics uh, so you can see uh, where we are with our individual departments. This is not our financial quarterly report. This is our departmental uh, metrics quarterly report. So uh, if you haven't had the opportunity, please take a look at that. Um, I am uh, excited to uh, inform the board that uh, the bicycle and pedestrian planning grant initiative, uh, which uh, is an initiative that we uh, that is a matching grant program that encourages municipalities to develop comprehensive bicycle and pedestrian plans, uh, the the vision of bicycle and pedestrian transportation and the transportation planning branch at uh, NCDOT funds this grant. Um, a desire for better multimodal options, uh, the demand for more walkable and bikeable communities in combination with smart growth initiatives have highlighted the need for better, more complete bicycle and pedestrian transportation systems here in North Carolina. And the comprehensive planning documents are an integral part uh, of the developing of these systems and can guide both local and state efforts to improve bicycling and walking conditions and to encourage the development of comprehensive local bicycle and pedestrian plans, DOT, uh, and their program have created a matching grant program to fund the development of the local bike and pedestrian plans. Uh, the town uh, last uh, updated its plan in 2014, and as you know, in the budget process, we did uh, allocate funds in the current budget process to match a grant if we were so lucky to, to receive one. And uh, I am pleased to, uh, to report to you that um, uh, we were funded out of a total of uh, 475 applicants and $6 million to be allocated to this program. The town was funded for uh, a bicycle and pedestrian plan uh, update for, for our community. And so uh, kudos to our planning department, Pam and her team, for putting together a competitive application. Not everybody got funded that, that applied for this grant. Um, but with the growth that we're experiencing here in the community and how this community is dynamically changing. DOT saw a need for us to uh, have good plans in place. Uh, these plans only help us and, and make us more competitive when CAMPO funding is available or other grant funding is available. Uh, it also helps us give good guidance to uh, development. Uh, when development occurs along uh, roadways that are, are our community transportation plan calls for improvements, we have a good plan in place that addresses both the pedestrian and uh, the bicycle component. You know, as we've grown, um, our interconnectivity in many of these different modes, uh, bicycle, but also the walking, the pedestrian, uh, has become more and more uh, a part of who Fuquay Farina is. Uh, when I walk by or see the coffee shops downtown and the restaurants, uh, many of the people that go to them are walking there. And that's kind of exciting mm -hmm. uh, to see. Part of that's the improvements that this board has had the foresight to, to improve in the downtown areas. But it's starting to move over to the back streets, uh, to the... Um, the areas that are not necessarily right on Main Street. Um, and they're certainly um, very walkable and pedestrian friendly. Many of them have bicycle racks and things like that. That's kind of neat. Yeah. Uh, and finally, you do have two first readings in your agenda materials. The first being a zoning map amendment and land use plan amendment for the preserve at Holland LLC. 
and this is on various parcels along Holland Road. They're provided to you in your, your agenda materials. This is rezoning petition REZ 2020-18, and this will be for your consideration with public hearing at the February uh, 1st, I guess it is, February 1st town board meeting. Um, the second first reading in your agenda materials is also a zoning map amendment submitted by Malden Watkins surveying uh, here on South uh, Main Street and uh, it is rezoning petition REZ 2020-19 and so I would encourage you to familiarize yourself with both of those first readings as there will be public hearings on those and on the agenda for our first meeting in February and with that mayor and board I have concluded my uh, manager's report for this evening okay thank you Adam thank you um, we're gonna move on um, you know, to kind of conclude this meeting um, town board uh, <coughs> comments uh, our mayor pro tem he's been uh, you might let everybody know what you've been doing a little bit today you what I've been doing today? Yeah, you just well, you just got back from a, a ball helping in a ball. Well, I've been I have talked many times at, the, at these board meetings how much I've enjoyed the youth athletic sports events that it, that our town has provided for staff and how those events continue. And today is the second to last um, basketball one for the week for the year or not for the session that's going on right now. And so that's what we did have earlier tonight and coaching. Six, it's eight on the team. Six were there tonight. Four and five year olds. It's like um, herding a bunch of cats <laughs> with a water hose, and um, it's, it's it's entertaining none, nonetheless. But they they learn the basics and they're having fun. And they their favorite thing about basketball. What would you think? You're a basketball pro from the back in the day. What do you think a four and five year old's favorite thing about basketball would be? They like to dribble. They're learning the basics of that. That's yeah. right. And they, they struggle very strongly with it. But, yes, sir, they do like to dribble. But the number one favorite thing to do is leave the ball behind and just run as fast as they can, bang and forth down the court. Bang and forth, bang and forth, bang and forth. They don't worry they about the ball. <laughs> they don't worry about the ball. Don't worry if it makes a shot. Don't care if they kick it or wherever it goes. Just run how fast they can run. And then it, when they get to the end, crash into the wall with a pad on it as hard as they can. And <laughs> like I haven't broken any noses yet. But, you know, if, if they do, then that will be one of the kids that are on um, – Jonathan's team and not my team. Okay. Uh, Jonathan's not coaching. But uh, uh, it's fun and good. And so that's, that's where I was today, and that's the casual outfit. And so um, it's tight getting out at 6.30 and then trying to get over here and eat something and get in here. But that was what – you asked what we did today, and that's what we did today. And on that – Good deal. Have Thank a good you evening, very everybody. much. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes, just real quickly, Mr. Mayor, I just want to say congratulations to our town staff and the event organizers for putting together the virtual Dr. Martin Luther King celebration, even though it was different than we've done in the past. They presented a very good program. I thought online it went across very smoothly without any major glitches. I thought it was a good program. So congratulations to the folks that worked really hard to put that together. Commissioner Harris. Uh, I'd also would like to just ditto what uh, Commissioner Smith said regarding the Martin Luther King program, I thought it was excellent, you know, given the challenges that they, that they were required to uh, have to, uh, to deal with, I thought it was excellent, a program that was put together very well. Uh, the other thing is the league uh, board met and did initially discuss some of the policy goals reviews. And um, did you get our 10 approved? Oh, uh, <laughs> this was just discussion. Okay. <laughs> but one of the issues, and I'm sure you all are aware of this, is, and Adam may know more about this, was dark fiber mm -hmm. as far as broadband was concerned. That issue was brought up as to how some municipalities, they have these lines available for broadband, but aren't, they aren't necessarily being used. Are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Yeah, I am. So, you know, dark and Scott, uh, our IT director, could certainly shed additional light on that. But, uh, uh, yeah, when a community uh, does install uh, fiber uh, conduit, they may mm -hmm. uh, put conduit in that has extra space. Uh, they, may, they may fill with uh, active fiber lines or dark fiber lines, and those dark fiber lines are, are 
are there because the installation of the infrastructure was cost effective to install them at the time, but the actual uh, need to lease that fiber or activate that fiber doesn't exist at the at the current moment. Uh, but we we did some of that when we did the uh, economic development um, effort with the fiber, didn't we? Certainly, when we were uh, uh, looking at our initial investments, we evaluated some dark, dark fiber options uh, uh, along the 55 and 401 uh, corridor. I think most of our fiber at this point is active fiber. Uh, well, but, but we my, certainly my did. point is I think Ting was interested That's in that correct. dark fiber. They That's were interested correct. in the things we had invested in for the future. That's right. Uh, is that a... a an asset for us as a community? Uh, Dark fiber can be an asset, absolutely. It, it, it absolutely can. As it relates to us specifically, I yeah. think, uh, again, most of our fiber right now that's in the ground is active fiber. Okay. Uh, we may have strands that uh, of the active fiber that we could uh, uh, shed off and, and, and lease um, should the, uh, the statutes be favorable to do that, uh, which is part of what the League of Municipalities is, is working on. Right. Uh, However, uh, right now, uh, we don't just necessarily have uh, dark fiber that's, that's not uh, being spliced off of or utilized in the ground. Okay. Okay, thanks. That was one of the part of the discussion that, um, that took place. I think if the statutes were more favorable to municipalities, you would see a whole lot more investment in, dark in, fiber. in, in that kind of uh, asset. Um, but uh, right now, the the statutes aren't necessarily there. Well, I think that's one thing the league wants to promote because exactly. a lot of your smaller towns have to contend with not enough broadband access, and that's part of the advocacy that the, the board is taking in regards to trying to deal with And I think that's a good one, especially into the rural areas mm -hmm. of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing, uh, the, the task force for racial equity among towns and cities met Friday and <clears throat> this past Friday and we had a very good meeting and uh, you know a lot of uh, tribute goes to the determination of the mayors and council men and women who are participating because uh, the plan is to try to develop some approach that can benefit those municipalities and towns in North Carolina who really want to take on the challenge of maintaining or promoting racial equity. And there are two more meetings scheduled, and hopefully by the end of 2021 that uh, we as a task force can make some recommendations and offer the local municipalities and towns an opportunity to participate, those who would be interested. Those good. are my comments, Mr. Mayor. Good. Mm -hmm. That's a good update. Thank uh, you. Uh, Commissioner, appreciate you taking on that extra task. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Wunsch. Mayor, I figured you'd like to hear this. Um, uh, the Fuquay basketball team has, been, has just had a uh, sensational uh, season so far, and uh, they're ranked, um, I think, number 16 right now. And um, they had a lot of years of just um, so struggles. <laughs> <laughs> struggles, but um, uh, this is been exciting here. All, all the seasons, I think, are cut short, you know, because of uh, COVID, but uh, they, they've, they've been doing sensational um, beat Middle Creek. That's good. Um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, but we've, we've um, there's been quite a few accolades that I've uh, read about over the last few weeks. Um, uh, I saw where um, Pequay Middle School was chosen as WRL, WRL Best Middle School uh, in the triangle. So mm. people in middle school got a nice accolade there. They and, did. They sure did. And then um, uh, one of the teachers at Fuqua High School uh, got an accolade for um, uh, one of the best teachers in the triangle. And then um, uh, there was also another accolade for a local business, um, uh, KMB Marketplace. So um, uh, it was nice to see so many accolades. Uh, from that um, from that award, which is the entire um, triangle, um, and then um, I just wanted to express my finally express my condolences to our town attorney on the on passing of his grandfather. But I was reading about him. I didn't know him personally, but I thought, Mayor, you could say a few words about him. But uh, 
apparently he, ha he had uh, just a, a tremendous impact on our, um, our community. And I never had the privilege of meeting him, uh, but I saw where you know, he had served as commissioner for a few decades in uh, a oil, <coughs> water and soil uh, conservation. Uh, conservation and, um, and so um, uh, I thought that was very interesting. And he, he absolutely, he was he certainly one of my heroes. Um, I went to a, uh, when I first came to Fuquay, I'm a young, uh, a young kid, I reckon. Mm -hmm. And I was invited to go out uh, with Stuart Adcock um, to a, um, they call them a hog killing, or a, I mean, they, where they kill the hogs and they uh, cut the meat up and they did it right there on you know, that morning, it took place real early in the morning. And um, he was so proud to um, to show me all about it. You know, I was from Wake Forest, and actually I had been to one before, but I was small and didn't really know that much about it. <laughs> but, um, yeah. But I, I go, I'm, we'll get back to him in just a minute, and, I, and I'll spend a little time because it, he, he's truly one of my heroes. Um, Commissioner Gardner. Um, I had the privilege this week of speaking to the Women's Club. They wanted an update on um, not not to take the thunder from the mayor's state of the town that's going to be coming up, but they wanted a little update on what was going on with the town for right now. And they were really engaged and really interested. And won't uh, I mean they're I, I'm I'm so proud of that organization because. Uh, that club at one time was probably all pretty much native women, I mean, women that had lived in this area all their lives. And it is such a great combination of newcomers and uh, women of all ages. And uh, um, it's just, they, they stay engaged trying to do good things for this community and along with the Junior Women's Club. I, um, I'm really impressed with what they do, but um, I was just, I'm making some notes here tonight. I'm, they want me to keep them informed, so I'm going to send them some um, notes from tonight's <coughs> meeting uh, because they want to be engaged. Tell them to uh, come to the state of the town address. You know, I, I, I told them that, and they, yeah. you know, they're really, they really yeah. are ready for that. And they, I showed them last year's. Right. And uh, they're they're excited and they're prepared and ready to. They put it on their calendar. Good. Um, I also was really impressed with the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. celebration yesterday, um, particularly, you know, uh, how well the um, Cultural Arts Society Board of Directors had worked to with all of the, the, the different um, issues that, that made it different this year. And the speaker, Dr. Wicker from Fayetteville, was really, really great. That... That was as good a speech as I believe I've heard. I, it was just, it was excellent. He did such a good job. So um, I enjoy that too. And something that struck me again as throughout the meeting tonight is something that we've heard so often as Adam and different ones have reported on things that the, um, the town, the staff has been doing. Um, I think Chief Fonstock said they had this, this um, their policies had been reviewed and were ready when this uh, opportunity to to present them came up. That they were they were right they were ready. They had them on the shelf and ready to go. That's something we hear often, and we heard it two more times tonight. And we've heard it a lot um, uh, when in in connection with the LAP grant uh, applications. I just really appreciate, as a board member, appreciate the effort that goes into that and the planning and forethought that our town manager and our staff have to to be in a position for us to take advantage of these opportunities when they arise. And we really appreciate it, Adam. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think that's a real good point, and I'll comment on on that for just a minute. You know, we we went to Washington D.C. Uh, we were going after these tiger grants, mm -hmm. and we were all excited. And we went up and we did a good job. I mean, we really did. Did the best we could do. And um, um, you know, we got in. The, we were in those house chambers. 
Mm-hmm. You know, we were we were in the House chambers with um, uh, George Holden uh, met with us and. Um, we met with our senators, but we weren't successful on that grant. But what we learned while we were up there was has been immeasurable. I can't tell you how many grants that we've that we've gotten, and a lot of it is being aware of and being and having planned for it ahead of time. And so we came back and. Many of the grants that we got that, I reckon, Adam, the next year, Mm -hmm. um, believe it or not, came from the preparation that was made for the Tiger Grants because we had already done the daily work. That's right. And, you know, somebody else in Wake County stumped their toe or within our Campo group stumped their toe, and we were right there and able to, to fall in and... Um, we continue to do that today, but I think that's, Marilyn, you make an extremely good point. Uh, Chief Thonstock has done that, and our whole team here, uh, Adam is very good, and Jim Seymour and Mark, too, uh, following these, what I call, um, almost blind opportunities. If you're prepared and it moves forward, um, you really can have a chance to, uh, to do good. You know, the thing that that I really think we should do, let's all, I'd like to give some kind of ovation to the Cultural Arts uh, Society group for this Martin Luther King uh, event that took place. I thought it was almost miraculous. It was really good and they planned so well. Um, It wasn't, the content was, was really good was really good um but the planning for it, the months in advance i mean they had done they did such a good job and um uh, worked so closely um with our folks there let's give them a round of applause right here just a something to acknowledge them and thank you very very much um and appreciate all the hard work um, that went into that. You know, going back to um, Commissioner uh, Stuart Adcock, um, you know, Fuqua Verena was much smaller when he was uh, a commissioner. Uh, he was chairman of the Wake County Board of Commissioners for many years. Um, he fought very hard. The Southern Regional Center would not be here if it wasn't for him. Um, you know, it was a very close vote, and he brought it into Fuqua Arena. He was very proud of helping the southern end of Wake County. Now, he helped all of Wake County as well, but he was a very, um, very positive person. Um, and I can't tell you how much he helped and worked with Fuqua Verena. Um, I was sharing this story last night at the Wake County Mayor's Association, and Matt Calabria, our Commissioner Calabria, was there, and he's now the chairman of the Wake County Commissioners. And um, uh, I was thinking a little bit about Mm -hmm. Stuart Adcock and how times have changed a lot. We were much bigger in farming uh, at that time. And uh, Stuart, I can't tell you all of the things he did to help um, help Southern Wake County. He and Waverly Aikens as well. Um, but during Stuart's uh, tenure, um, it tended to be that a lot of things <coughs> fell our way. And um, uh, he helped Wake Tech, you know, expand. Um, and I'm not so sure it wasn't during that time period that Fuqua Verena got water out to uh, Wake Tech. As mm-hmm. all of you all know, they're probably, if not our biggest water and sewer customer, they're one of our biggest customers. Wake Tech is in the uh, Fuqua Verena. Um, and... Uh, Commissioner Adcock 
worked very hard. He was very proud of Wake Tech and, and the southern region. Um, and I mean, I could go on and on about uh, about Stuart Stuart Adcock. Um, he grew up actually. Uh, his home was uh, over there on off right on Ransom Street. It was on Main Street, but on the corner of Ransom Street and Main Street is where he grew up. And he used to tell me um, he was really a city boy that moved out onto the farm. Of course, back, he said back then he said that was the country. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know. I, I'm just we were all um, we were blessed to have him as uh, chairman of the mm -hmm. Wake County Commissioners. Um, Adam, we've got a few things. We got some uh, Metro Mayor's meetings coming up. Uh, we got a Wake County uh, Joint CAC meeting. Um, what is CAC the I'll have to refer back to your calendar, Mayor. Okay. The Wake County Joint CAC, the uh, county. I'll have to refer back. Okay. We'll pull it. We'll find that up. Then we've got that ribbon cutting, and all of y'all are invited to come to that ribbon cutting, um, but we're not trying to invite, you know, it's not a public event. That's right. Other than if y'all want to come. Um and then we got the uh, Metro Mayors um, uh, on the 20, 29th. But we're in, when do we go to Pinehurst? We'll, we will be in, uh, at our town board retreat when that weekly meeting, meeting comes on. So we may be able we'll to see it. Probably miss up. that one and yeah. have okay. to get updated. Yeah. Okay. Do you, you have a closed session? No, sir. No closed session this okay. evening. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. To adjourn. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're adjourned. You need to vote.